We mm. all know as ladies it's, yeah. it's going to hit us at some point. And we mentioned the hot sweats and the things that we do know about. That, that's the common side of the Yeah, so the, the average symptoms. age of the menopause in this country is 51. Uh, but anything after 45 is deemed as normal. Um, and people don't necessarily just stop their periods. About seven or eight out of every ten women will have other symptoms associated. And I'm sure if we went down the embankment today and said, right, you know, what are the symptoms? Even the men would be able to tell you about night sweats and hot flushes. I think it's less well recognised that a lot of women really struggle with confidence issues, self-esteem, mood swings, feeling spontaneously tearful, memory issues, not being able to concentrate. Um, and if you're somebody who's actually always been quite with it, mm. that is really frightening. Um, and if you don't know about that as the menopause, you really don't know what's going on. And there are other things as well, dry skin, thinning hair, joint pains, I mean, you name it, really. Yes. <laughs> and you can blame yes, the menopause on it. Absolutely, <laughs> Christy, but you were nodding there, obviously. In, in agreement and, and you had a lot of those symptoms as well but you also did still have your period didn't you at that yes, stage so which was the confusing exactly. phase. So the reason I wrote about it initially is because I felt so strongly that I had no idea that this could be that what I had was anxiety I mean I left the house I was functioning but um, I felt that something must be very wrong with my life as opposed to recognizing it as a hormonal mm -hmm. symptom mm -hmm. changing and it really happens during perimenopause, which isn't menopause, so uh, apparently that's the 10 years leading up to menopause. And what's happening is your body apparently is trying to produce estrogen and you're having these huge fluctuations. And what I've learned subsequently is about a third of women will experience mood issues not, like yeah. I did. Well, so yours were extreme, weren't they? They were extreme, but they're not, probably not that extreme. Um, I think it's just that I've come forward to say we need to start talking about this. Well, you're a very private person. Yes. I'm why a why come forward? Why talk about it? Because, um, you know, I can't bear the idea that women think they're going crazy when, in fact, they can, you know, do something about it that's quite simple and that they're being misdiagnosed. Well, it had a, a profound effect on family life. Uh, at one stage you thought, I think on two occasions you thought there was an intruder in the house. Yep. When there wasn't, you were just, you s just saw something. Um, no, and who wants to be that person who's saying, you know, I, I woke up one night, it was around two o'clock in the morning, my husband was away and I, it was a dream but it was so vivid that I could tell you exactly, you know, I thought this man with blue hair was coming in the window and I ran out of my room and I held the door like this and I screamed for my children. <laughs> my 16-year-old son, I said, there's a man in my room, there's a man in my room, and he came down with his cricket bat, um, and then I thought, wait a minute, I live on the fourth floor, there can't be a man in my room, and, but it was that vivid, and I used to wake up occasionally just, you know, with my heart pounding, and I found out later it's completely a symptom of the fluctuating in hormones, but I'd never had a hot flash. Mm.